Hi everyone, this is David and welcome to week four, session four of Business Communications, part of your FedEx Business Essentials Certificate Program. We're going to be studying this week effective business writing, and that's the good news. The not so good news is the 7% rule. The 7% rule was coined by Dr. Albert Morabian, who was a linguist psychologist studying language at UCLA in the 1960s and 70s, and what he and his colleagues discovered was 93% of the messages we communicate are communicated not by our words, but by nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication means gestures, facial expressions, body language, and the most important one, our tone of voice. So that means only 7% of the message we communicate is contained in our words. The other 93% is contained in what is called the second conversation or nonverbal language. Okay, so what does that mean for us? It means that you're going to be studying writing, and writing with nonverbal language removed is nothing but a bunch of black squiggles on a white screen or white page, black squiggles that must be interpreted and decoded, and that means they're open to misinterpretation. And it also means that writing is harder than speaking and listening. It takes more time. Why? Because with that nonverbal language missing, with only the 3% left, you're entering what is essentially a new world, a new kind of language, full of rules of grammar and usage and syntax and all these other kinds of things that you had to spend a lot of years studying. But now for the really good news. Just as if you learn certain techniques and practice them, you can become a good and even great business communicator. The same is true for business writing. If you learn and practice certain techniques, you can become a good and even great business writer. I've been teaching business communications and business writing for over 20 years, and I assure you, that it is something that you can learn and become good and even great at. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other things that this week has for us. So we'll click on session four, and the first thing we see is our standard menu of videos. And this week we have some videos about the difference between communicating via writing and communicating via face-to-face. -face. It's very interesting that both videos have the same message for you about the superiority of face-to-face -face communication. Now, in a preparation, you have an outstanding website here that lists 10 effective tips for business writing. I highly recommend that you look at learn, commit to memory, but most importantly, practice some of these 10 business tips that you are seeing here. They're, they really are excellent. And if you know them and if you practice them and if you make them a habit, you will be a better business writer. Then there is a quick podcast by Jack and Susie Welch. They also talk about the superiority of face-to-face -face versus writing. They admit that sometimes writing is necessary, but in the main, it is often best to go face-to-face. -face. Now, for your lecture documents, you have some excellent lecture notes here that include a page that talks about what FedEx expects in its written communications. There's a page here that lists 10 rules for emails that you must abide by. So whenever we practice in class, we're going to be sure to apply those 10 rules. Then, as usual, you've got your discussion. Now, this week, your discussion is, of course, going to have you think about email. Let's read it. First, select a four to eight sentence, and that's a minimum. 
professional email, that means you've done it in the workplace, that you've written and sent to someone. Second, analyze that email using the principles discussed in our lecture, especially the 10 rules by FedEx, including subject line, tone, length, your communication style, and other composition, that means grammar, syntax, punctuation, spelling, issues. Next, or finally, describe at least three potential changes you would make to the email that will have a significant impact on your professional effectiveness. Everybody can find at least three things to change. Now, something else that I've done here, and we talked about this last week, is that I've added a thread for you to post your final project topic. Yes, it's due in two weeks, your final project. So now is the perfect time to get started thinking about it. I said two weeks, it's actually three weeks. You have all of week four, all of week five, and all of week six. I'm sorry. So here we go. Your final project for this course is due at the end of week six. This week, it's important that you identify a topic for your project and receive feedback on it so that you can further refine your idea. You're going to be very glad that you took this pre-writing step. So if you would, and again, this is totally voluntary, please post one to two paragraphs outlining what you're considering for your final project. In those one to two paragraphs, I would suggest that you, one, tell us what is the opportunity for improvement. That's the problem. That, two, you outline what changes or other action that you're proposing. That's the solution. And, three, that you will outline what the benefits will be if your solution is implemented. And, of course, how you're going to measure the outcome, how you're going to see or recognize those benefits. I encourage everyone to respond to each other, to help each other, offer suggestions and comments. In other words, as you know in your teamwork, all minds in the game. And I will be on the discussion board as well this week. Now, I've also posted a pretty long list here of videos that I've done on a lot of common composition issues from the apostrophe to sentence fragments, spelling, grammar, and style checkers. Most of these, not all of them, I think only about three of them, do not have a self-test or a self-quiz. So they're pretty self-contained, and I would recommend that you look down that list and find some weaknesses. They're all short videos, five minutes, and then they all have a self-test except a few of them. Okay, let's look at that final assignment that you have due. That is that Word document. Now, you can probably guess that this Word document is going to deal with, drum roll please, effective emails. That's the kind of writing that you're focusing on this week. You have two data fields to fill out, identify challenges when using email to communicate professionally. Consider your use of email as a channel. That means when email is appropriate, when it's not appropriate as well as the content structure and other elements of your actual message. Two, describe specific actions you plan to improve your email practices. So the discussion board and the Word document do this week very much mirror each other. Okay, so those are your activities and deliverables for this week of writing, especially email writing that we're going to be focusing on in our live lecture on Thursday. I look forward to seeing you there and talking more about this important subject. See you then.